In today's video, we are back with our second ever Marvel Legends action figure review, guys, and we are taking a look at the brand new Marvel Legends series Spider-Man No Way Home Green Goblin figure. And this is actually a figure that I've been waiting on for so very long, man. Now, you guys know that I typically don't review Marvel Legends figures unless they do mean a lot to me, and in this case, this one means more to me than the three-pack did. We did review the Spider-Man three-pack from No Way Home. Now we're taking a look at the Green Goblin from No Way Home, which is a figure, again, that I've been waiting on for a very long time, man. I've, I've just been waiting and waiting for this figure. It took a long time, but it does look like it is worth it, man. Here is the figure in the front viewing window, as you guys can see, that doesn't exist. Yeah, unfortunately, it is windowless, which is crappy. I'm, I just can't stand this, man. How much better would this be if this entire part right here was left out? You could see the goblin, all the different accessories. Also, I think that a, a thing that would have made this packaging better is if the helmeted version of the goblin was right here instead of right here, because we have so many shots of Norman with his helmet off. This shot right here of zoomed in on the face would have been a perfect money shot for the Green Goblin helmet, I think. I think it would have just really stood out. But nonetheless, you guys can see here, you know, Marvel Legends, the Green Goblin, the name, you know, all the different artwork on the side. You get a shot of the figure there, like a little render image. On the back, you do get a shot of the figure, some accessories, the glider, all the different info down here. On the side, you get a nice stylized image of the Goblin on the side right there, kind of like a cartoony illustrated version, which is also cool. And on the top, you do get the Spider-Man No Way Home logo or the Spider-Man logo there. And that is pretty much our packaging for the Goblin, man. It looks pretty damn good. I'm excited. Can't wait to crack them out of the packaging. So without further ado, man, let's shut the hell up, pop them out of the packaging, find out what the Green Goblin is all about. All right, so here's our Green Goblin out of the packaging, man. I mean, Jesus, Lord in heaven. This figure is crazy on the detail, man. I mean, I've been waiting on an old school looking Green Goblin figure for a very long time for Marvel Legends. And then I knew this would be the opportunity we could get it, man. I mean, the Green Goblin, one of my favorite villains of all time. I think that Willem Dafoe and his version of the Green Goblin is probably my favorite villain of all time, especially like movie villain and like superhero or whatever you want to call it on screen. I mean, I'm just, I don't know. I love the character. I think what he did with it. I like the design, everything about it. I mean, it's also super nostalgic for me. Like this is my spy. Man, this is my universe right here. So this is a beautiful figure. I think they did a fantastic job on this so far. We, of course, got to get into the details and all the different stuff with, with the have you, but I think all of the different details you're getting here are fantastic. I do have a couple gripes here and there about it, which we're going to get into, but I uh, I love it. I love it so far, man. But we're going to dive into every single detail about the figure, find out what the hell it's all about. But I, I enjoy, I'm enjoying a lot of the stuff we're getting right here, man. However, it is not perfect, and it is not without my gripes that I have with the figure. So we're going to dive into that as well. But nonetheless, man, let's dive into the accessories you get with the goblin and then we'll dive into the goblin itself all right so getting into the accessories you get with the green goblin figure here he is everything that you get here not like a ton, but you certainly do get a lot. I mean, the one big accessory does fill it up, and this thing does retail for $49.99. I don't know how I feel about that price. I feel like, you know, with Marvel Legends nowadays, that we, I feel like we have just been absolutely annihilated by price gouging sometimes. I mean, it is ridiculous. On this one, however, I don't know really how it shakes out. I mean, maybe like $39.99 would have been better. $34.99 probably would have been more accurate, to be honest with you, but I don't really care in this case because the Green Goblin probably would have paid $199 if they wanted to. The most important accessory that I was worried about is the helmet accessory that comes on the figure right here, man. So we do get an unmasked head sculpt, and then we do get the helmet head sculpt here, which is absolutely beautiful. This is the silhouette of my childhood. This is just everything you love to see, man. I think the sculpting is very phenomenal here. The color, a little bit lighter, I think. Like, the green across the entire figure is a little bit bright, but I still think it works out well. The eyes look good. Everything here looks really, really good. I like all the sculpt work going on and everything like that. Fits the figure well and all those different things, but I do have one gripe about it, which we'll get into in just a moment, but the helmet accessory looks so good. This looks good just chilling by itself on a shelf. If you don't want to put it on the figure, you could have it on that dumpster. You could have it sitting on his chair if you want to do that for a display. Lots of different things you could do here, but I'm definitely going to put it, be putting mine on the figure, so that's what I love about it. So there's the helmet accessory, which I think looks great. Then you have your evil Norman Osborn head sculpt. Man, this Willem Dafoe looks so good, man. Look at that crazed evil snore right there. He looks so good man. It reminds me of Lot. I do think on the back of the packaging, the head sculpt looks better than it does here. However, I still like it a lot. I like the hair flow. I like the sculpt and everything going on with it. It reminds me of that. It reminds me a lot of the moment in the first movie when he's talking to himself in the mirror. I think that's really good. I think it just looks so good there. That evil smile right there when he's getting hit repeatedly in the face by Tom Holland or Spider-Man. That looks just, oh man, that is absolute money right there. So I'm absolutely happy that we have both. So now you can do like a suited version, which is why 
I want more head sculpts in the future from other releases so that you can do like a suited version and stuff and he's not just having this evil smile the whole time, you know what I mean? So uh, the Norman head sculpt does look really, really good. And we also get a hooded accessory. So here is the figure there. And then, you know, if you have the, the head sculpt, you can put that in there, see what this looks like. Uh, it looks pretty good in there. I think it fits well. You know, I would have preferred, you know, some cloth goods with a with a bendy wire or something like that, which is probably going to have to come in the aftermarket. But I think it's still is pretty cool accessory to have the hood in there. I think that's a pretty good uh, thing to lock in there. I think the sculpt's nice. I think the color's pretty good. All those different things, little, you know, little waves and wrinkles in there look really, really good. So the hoodie does look pretty nice, I'd say. He also comes with his goggles, which are pretty nice. And if you guys wanted to see what these look like on the figure, you can slide this over the top of the head sculpt right there. And this will give you your goblin, the goggles look. If you want to have that goggle look from the film, got a real Doc Ock looking thing going on right there. But yeah, I think, I think the goggles look pretty good. I may have them all on the upside down, but I don't know. I think that still looks good regardless if I have them on upside down or not. And I think that looks pretty good. It gets the job done, you know. I don't think you're going to have any different quarrels about that right there. I, I'm enjoying that right there. So there's Norman with his goggles on. So that's kind of his look from the film. And you can, of course, put the hood on there, which is also nice. But you also get one pumpkin bomb. Now, for the $49.99 price point, it would have been nice to get like three or four of these. But, you know, you do get one. And it feels super tiny. Like, it's very tiny. So you got to be careful. But it does have the green in there. A little bit of green paint and then like a tiny orange ball. So got to be careful with that. But he can hold this one in his right hand. And I do find it difficult to get it out of his hand once he's holding it. You know, here's his hand. And you can like plug that in there right there. So that's pretty good right there. I wish you could really store this onto, like how cool would it be to have like three or four and you could store some of them onto the glider like you could on the old Green Goblin figure back in the day. But I guess they didn't care about that. But no interchangeable hands or anything like that. However, you do get two more accessories that come with this figure. And the first is going to be this clear flight stand. So what's cool is you can have it like really high up like this. You could rotate it and have it short or you could rotate it again and have it like medium so it is like a trifold different thing there so you can like fly it different ways but it does come with this big ball joint right here and it does plug into the bottom of the glider right there so if you guys want to uh, put it on a flight stand you can do that right there and of course he can like stand on there and you can like bend him different ways which I'll show him how he goes on the glider in here in a moment but I do want to show off the glider before we move on to the figure itself all right man so for the glider I mean we have seen it's been a long time since we saw a glider accessory you know from from any sort of big boy company, you know, making these figures. So these two things, the two foot pedals or the two where the, the foot stands or the feet stands do come separate out of the packaging. You do port those in right here where these little hinges are. And they do have little, they do, they do have pegs for the bottom of the feet and they have little hooks right here. But you do get a little bit of articulation out of the, out of the glider here. As you guys can see, it can rotate a little bit there. But a lot of great details and sculpts going on right here, man. Like this right here is plated. It's got a little texturization going on there. The gunmetal gray color. Color. This is rubber over here, so that's nice. It's not going to stab you. The front of it, though, is not super stiff, so it's enough to impale Norman, I guess, but it's not going to hurt you, I don't think. But, you know, it's not, like, sharp, super sharp hard plastic, but all of this stuff looks really, really good. I think they did a really great job on the sculpt work here. You get all this stuff under here, some rockets and different stuff. All this is like rubber molded, but it feels high quality. It, it doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. There is your hole for the ball joint so you can pose this thing around on the flight stand, and then it does have the back of the glider right there. I don't know, man. It's just it's very finicky when you're trying to pose Norman on this thing, which we'll get into in just a moment, but he's just difficult to get on this thing and like make him look really, really natural when flying it, which we'll get into in a moment, but let's dive into Norman first and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at what Norman looks like on the glider itself. All right, man, so getting into the figure itself, starting out at the head skull, we did already take a look at it, but this is one of the gripes I was talking about right here. So if you do interchange the head sculpt, right, and you want to put the goblin or the, the helmeted head sculpt on here, this is my only gripe about it. And I guess it's like kind of a mixed bag. You guys can tell me what you think here. So when you pop on the goblin helmet right here, it looks fine straight on, but when you turn it, you do get skin showing on right there, which is kind of annoying. Now, the only way you could really get around that is if you did have like an interchangeable neck or something like that. However, I guess you could if you wanted to. You could pop this head off and like custom paint the neck green. I think that would probably make it look a whole lot better there. But this on the figure looks so damn good like straight on right there. That looks epic man. So I, I think that I'm probably going to keep mine like that or I'll probably have, let's be honest, I'm going to be having multiple versions of this figure. But I don't know. That's definitely something I'm going to play around with. See exactly what I want to do. But the helmeted head sculpt does look really good on the figure. I think it looks proportionate. I think they did a really good job capturing 
capturing that, so that is good right there. But I did want to point out the neck being skin tone when you put the helmeted head sculpt onto the figure. And then here is the hooded head sculpt onto the figure as well. If you guys wanted to see what that looks like, there is the hooded head sculpt on there. So you get a little bit of a gap. It doesn't fit quite flush. You know, I mean, I guess it will fit flush, but then you got to be really careful with it and everything like that. I guess it doesn't really matter once you're looking at it from the front, but uh, yeah, it does vary. But going down into the body and stuff like that, you have a ton of detail here. Not only in the rip shirt, this is a rubber piece that hooks over the arm right there, but you do get the sculpted like utility belt going around, all these bags and stuff like that. Look at the different sculpts on the arms and different things going on, man. It's blades right here, which are a little bit misshapen, not the biggest deal ever, but I think they did a fantastic job on just all the sculpt work, man. Tons of great sculpt work, one of one stuff, man. I mean, uh, this is probably why it did cost $49.99, because you're getting all of this one of one sculpt and stuff like that. I don't know how you're going to get any use out of this or reuse out of this, but the sculpt on the arms and the different stuff going on, there's your goblin butt, you get the bags and the different silver. They actually painted the back of the figure, which I think is also big, but all of this stuff is sculpted in here, the armor and just the different details that they applied to the figure looks so good, man. I don't even know what this is, but they sculpted the little thigh stuff on there and everything underneath. I saw some people like cutting off the purple hoodie, cutting off the utility belt, and then putting the helmet head sculpt on there and kind of making, trying to make like an original Raimi goblin figure, which I guess could work. I don't know. I feel like you'd need a little bit more customization to really make it look like the original goblin, but the knee pads on there, the little silver X's, and he's got his nice little faux kick pads or whatever you want to say there in the yellow, and then uh, I guess, I don't know if he wore foam posits again, but they are supposed to be foam posits, but I don't know if they got those in there or not. They don't look like they did, but I don't know. They're kind of covered up anyway, but yeah, I mean, this, oh man, what a beast of a figure. Now, as far as articulation, this does not have a hinge in it. It is just a regular ball joint, so you can look down a little bit, look up a little bit. Uh, you get a little bit of head tilting and stuff like that. Arms do go about above 90, to be honest with you, which is actually shocking to me, but some of these figures just feel like they're going to snap in half, so you do may want to be careful around that. There is no butterfly joint or anything like that. He's got double jointed arms and a bicep cut as well. Wrists obviously rotate and hinge, but it is a very tight hinge. Like, I haven't really gotten a good hinge out of the hands. Diaphragm joint, you know, it's decent. It's just very bulky because there's a lot going on up here, but you do get a little bit of movement there. Ab crunch is virtually non-existent between the belt and everything like this, man. I mean, he can lean back a little bit, but moving forward and stuff is nothing, and he doesn't have, like, anything lower. So, yeah, ab crunch is pretty disappointing on this figure. He can do the split C's. He's got upper thigh cut. He does have double jointed knee, which is pretty good, and he, do he doesn't have any lower leg cut, which I find very annoying on figures, and then you do have the ankles moving down and up. He has the ankle pivot, of course, and yeah, I mean, he he's just very limited articulation-wise. That's probably my biggest gripe with the figure, to be honest, but I don't know. Let's get into some comparisons, and then we'll try to put this guy onto the glider itself so we can see how he flies. For your Green Goblin figure comparisons, guys, here is Tobey Maguire Spider-Man up next to the new Green Goblin, and I don't know how they scale, man, to be honest with you. I don't know. It's like it, they almost scale well, and then it feels like Goblin may be massive compared to him. It's really hard, honestly, and it just makes this figure just look so... Like, this figure on the leg, it could be so much better, man. Like, look at that Spider-Man right there, man. Like, he, he just looks like a little boy or something like that, man. I, I don't know. There's just certainly things they could do to upgrade that figure in a ton of ways, man, and that's that's the original three-pack version. That is not the other version, and I don't think there's any differences between the interchangeable head sculpt. I just haven't found that figure just yet. I am working on that, and I do believe I have, like, some pre-order, but they haven't shipped just yet, but I don't know, man. This kind of pisses me off. This should be a grandiose moment, but the Green Goblin figure destroys this Spider-Man figure so far. And then here's a shot of Green Goblin up next to the other three Spider-Man all together here, man, and again, I just think that the Green Goblin kind of, like, towers over him for some reason. I don't know what you guys think about that. You guys can let me know, but uh, it's still surreal to have these figures. It's just it does touch my soul to have all these figures, but they could certainly be improved in different ways, especially the, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Like, Jesus Christ, son. Get it together. Then here's our MCU Green Goblin up next to our comic book version or animated series version of the Green Goblin right there, which I thought was also awesome, and I don't have the new animated series version either, which I desperately need the two-pack with MJ. God, I need that figure, but still thought it'd be cool to see the two, uh, sort of like two different sides 
of the universe here between the Green Goblin figures. And then for some more MCU figures, here is the Sandman from the No Way Home Wave, and then we also have Peter Parker from the Ned and Peter 2-pack, which I also like. So, I don't know, just sort of uh, seeing what these guys look like all together. I think they all look pretty good up next to each other. Tell me how you feel about that Sandman figure. I actually, I don't know, he posts around pretty good, and it's a very weird figure, but I think it could get the job done depending on what you're doing with your display and stuff. We'll have to see about that as we set up, but I don't know, pretty cool to see these up next to each other as well, but uh, I did want to do one more thing with the figure. So this is the Willem Dafoe head sculpt or the unmasked head sculpt onto the Matt Murdock or the Daredevil uh, body, and I feel like the body, I don't know, the head's probably a little bit too big for this body, but I don't know, I guess it could get the job done if you wanted to. I've seen a lot of people use Toby's body or Toby's head sculpt on this body, which looks good, but I don't know, it's not terrible. I don't, I don't know. Just, I don't, I don't, I don't freaking know. I don't, I don't know if I like it. Probably not. Nah, probably not. And here's the Norman head sculpt on the J. Jonah Jameson body, and I like this a whole lot more. That actually looks pretty damn slick right there, so that may be an option for you if you guys wanted to try that. You have the Norman head sculpt onto the J. Jonah Jameson body, which I think looks pretty damn smooth. That's not bad right there, but I don't know. I think I'm going to play with, around with some different uh, options and different stuff just to see. It depends on what look you're wanting, I guess, but nonetheless, it's still cool to see these on uh, different suited bodies trying to get like a civilian looking Norman or Willem Dafoe. But going back to the goblin and trying to put him onto the glider man, you're going to slide his foot in there and then try to push the, the peg hole or the peg into the peg hole right there and then spreading out his legs and like, I don't know, it's just like, see what I'm talking about here? Even if you flatten that out and like slide that in right there and then you get the, you get the, say you get the foot, the feet on the pegs right here and he's standing straight up. I mean, I guess that's okay right there, but you see how like it's wanting to turn inward and then when you try to spread it out and fix it, the legs get kind of out of whack and then he can't like stand straight on. I don't know. And then if you bend the legs and try to like get him into a like dynamic pose, there's really no great way to get him into a super dynamic pose. I mean, like you're going to have to sit here and play around with this for a little bit there and like try and get it because then like they see the feet are going to pop off and do all these different things. So I, I find that to be my biggest gripe with it, to be honest. It's just not very user friendly. Like it's going to take a little bit of time and trickeration to really get him into those poses that you probably want because look how far the feet like poke out and stuff. I don't know. It's still badass and it's still awesome to pose around and play with, but you're definitely going to have to like spend some time practicing and trying to get the, you know, the manipulation and stuff. Like you put him on that glider right there and then like the ab crunch isn't the best, but I don't know. I guess uh, for now it's okay. It's just, I don't know. It just looks super stiff on there. You're going to have to get really good at it, but uh, yeah, there's Green Goblin on the glider. But I think that just about wraps up our Marvel Legends action figure review on the Spider-Man No Way Home Green Goblin Deluxe figure, man. I mean, this is just about everything I've wanted out of the figure. Now, again, it's not perfect by any stretch. I'll go over some of the things I love about the figure and then some of the things that I don't like about the figure. First of all, I love all the details. I love the helmet. I love that they included the helmet. Thank God. I think that's one of, that's one of my favorite parts of the Goblin's design in general. Loved it way back in the day. Love it now. Love it forever. It's just like a, a just a freaking perfection. I just love it. It means so much to me personally. I think the Willem Dafoe head sculpt is fantastic. That evil grin. Really wish we could have got a couple more different head sculpts. Maybe we'll get some down the line in other packs and stuff like that. I'd like to see some other ones, but I am glad they got that evil, you know, snarling face. I think that's so good. I think it looks just like Defoe. I like some of those things going on there. Love the glider. Love the details. The coloration on the figure is nice. All of the different details you're getting in the sculpt work and all of those different things is fantastic. I think they did a really good job on all of those fronts. Some of the things I don't like about the figure is I feel like the articulation is pretty limited. It's not as fluid as I would like it to be. I really would like to see it be a little bit more articulated. I wish it could move around a little bit more. I feel like it is a bit stiff at times and different things like that. No interchangeable hands, which is also kind of a bummer for me. He's very difficult to pose on the glider in general. I think that's really where it comes in. You know, I guess it wouldn't be as bad if he wasn't as limited on the glider itself. It's just very hard to get him in certain poses on the glider and the way that the glider kind of interacts with the figure itself when standing on it. And I think that's really what should have been probably the most important detail of the figure. However, I still like a lot of things about the figure and how detailed it is and how sick it is. I still love the figure. I think it's going to be more of a legend of the year. Like, I don't know how you're going to really compete with this. It is it is top of the line. It's definitely top of the line, but that will probably be my biggest gripe is just posability overall. But I also really do like all the things going on with it, man. It met all my expectations for the most part. I have not put this thing down since getting it. I, I It's just so much fun and it's everything I wanted it to be. Now, I think you could upgrade this figure in a few ways, which I look forward to doing. So we'll see about that and all those different things. However, I really do enjoy this figure. I think it's really fun and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So far, I do 
have only three copies of this figure, and I did, uh, when I knew this figure was coming out, I set myself out saying that I would be buying it every time I saw it, and so far that's been the case, so we will have to see what comes of this in the future with the Willem Dafoe's and the displays and stuff, can't wait to get that started, but this uh, Willem Dafoe Green Goblin Marvel Legends figure is incredible, I think it looks amazing, and it is, again, not a perfect figure, but I think that it's not skippable, you need to grab this thing, man, but uh, another slight inconvenience for me is when you have the helmet head sculpt on there, the neck is still exposed, so you can still see his neck instead of it being green, so I may, I may customize one to have like, you know, sort of a throwback looking goblin, and then have one that's like super movie accurate with like a cloth goods hood and different things on there, still experimenting with that, but I think even if you just painted the neck green, like similar green color, it would probably look better with the helmet on there, but that's just a slight gripe, I know you can't, unless you had an interchangeable neck, you really couldn't uh, do anything about that, so we'll have to see, but Nonetheless, man, that is pretty much going to wrap up the Marvel Legends review on the Green Goblin, man. Love this figure. Overall, great things about it. You should definitely grab it. But a huge shout-out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. I always appreciate you fellows over there. Hope you guys did enjoy this sort of different review style here for a Marvel Legends figure. Again, it is the second time we've ever done a Marvel Legends figure, and I do expect more to come. So if you guys did enjoy the Marvel Legends review, let me know down in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video to help the video with engagement. Leave me a comment on what you think about this. Who is your favorite MCU villain? And I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at my name, Toys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>